Well, more than anything else, slavery and segregation are America's foundational sins, of course. For a century after the Civil War, America remained a racially divided land, where in some places, whites and non-whites were kept apart with the force of law. If you attended school in the last 40 years, the end of that system was a big deal. It was celebrated. Everyone was happy about it. But it turns out we may have had it wrong, at least according to Columbia University, because the school has set aside rooms that can only be used by people on the basis of their skin color for non-white or gay rights groups. Straight whites, not allowed. Sean Ryan is a Columbia student who co-chairs a committee that recommended that new policy, and he joins us to explain the thinking behind it. Hey, Sean, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on, Tucker. So the idea behind this kind of challenges a lot of our assumptions. I mean, if you can't be around people who are different from you, if being around them makes you so uncomfortable you need your own place to be, that suggests that the underlying assumption about diversity is wrong, which is, of course, being around people who are different from you is a good thing, right? So thanks so much, Tucker, again, for having me on the show. So, you know, when, the, when two rooms became available in our uh, student center uh, pretty recently, you know, we looked across our community to, community to build broad consensus among students, student groups, student councils, to figure out what would be the best way to use these rooms to meet the needs of our community. And so, you know, this decision, uh, you know, really, really came at a time when we've been having a lot of issues around suicide uh, and mental health and isolation. And so we ended up deciding on dedicating one space uh, to LGBT students and the other to students of color. And this was a data-driven data decision. 63% of the students who have died by suicide at Columbia since the year 2000 are students of color. Two LGBT students, openly LGBT students, have died by suicide at Columbia in the past three years. And so, you know, you know what, we, what these spaces will do will provide support for those groups to fight the isolationism um, you know, that's been happening. And also to really hit your point about what you were saying was segregation, what I think you mean is exclusivity. These spaces will provide programming for the entire, community, the entire Columbia community, all students, anybody who's interested, regardless of background, to come together, share experiences, build empathy and really build a stronger Columbia community. Okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm for empathy and I'm certainly against people harming themselves. But the underlying assumption of what you just said is that being around people who are different is traumatic. And that, of course, was the justification for segregation. So, so it's a I, that's surprising. not really what I'm saying, Tucker. What I'm saying is that... Well, then you're, you're suggesting no, what, they killed themselves because they had to be around other people. No, what I'm saying is that... Like that is not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that isolationism can lead to suicide. And what, what we've done here is that look at our community I'm, I'm identify, sorry, and what identify what our needs. What does that mean, isolationism? Isolationism, uh, you know, not, mean, like, not, not feeling, like, not feeling like you can come together, come together with others and really share your experiences. It's important to feel like you have people around you that understand you, and there are, there are differences in these communities. And so it's really important for people to have that opportunity to come together and also provide the opportunity for anyone in the community, regardless of background, skin color, anything, to come together and hear that so that together we can build a so, stronger community. So, so groups of white students could use the room set aside for students of color? Uh, they could use the room to come together for, for programming with students from those backgrounds so that we can but share what if they, so that we can what share if they felt uncomfortable? I mean, because obviously Columbia is, has a relatively small percentage of white men there. I mean, they're a distinct minority on campus. So if they wanted to set up their own area, would, would you be for that? Um, so, look, all, all communities have to prioritize their, you know, prioritize, all communities, businesses, organizations have to prioritize their resources. <laughs> oh, that's a simple question. No, they have Would to prioritize that or not? Look, they have to prior prioritize their resources based on the needs of their community. What we're seeing here is that the, these particular communities were in need, and so therefore we, we've reacted. Well, according to you, but what if a bunch of, like, straight white kids got together and said, you know, we feel oppressed here by people perhaps like you, Sean? and we need our own student-sponsored, school-paid-for room to gather with just straight white guys. Would you say, I get that, that's okay, or would well, you not? I think that given, given the data that we have around suicide and the pressing needs of our community and the limited space that we have, there are other ways in which that space can be used. Oh, so no, in other words, so it's a double standard. So certain races get their own rooms and others don't. Is no, what no what I'm saying is that we're reacting to needs and we're providing support for communities that have demonstrated those needs so what through you're, data. What you're doing is using imprecise, silly academic talk to dodge my question. So no, no, ask no, you, not no, at all. Let me ask you I time. can't think if, of anything more real than suicide, Tucker. Well, I'm, I'm not denying the reality of suicide. Well, I know. You, I'm said, I was, you said I was using I'm, academic I'm, talk. I'm not doing I'm, that at all. No, no. I'm, I'm contesting your assumption about what causes suicide. No. Are you, so you don't think that isolationism that, causes that, suicide? I don't know what isolationism is. It's actually a foreign and, and, policy term here in Washington. So you know, I guess no, it means really, nothing no. around so people who are So when I say like isolation, you? yeah, I mean feeling, you know, cutting yourself off, not feeling like you have a community. So, but and the, there I, are differences among well, these let's communities. Well, let's get deeper here. So you're saying that people are more comfortable maybe have better mental health when they're around people who are just like them. And I'm saying I feel like maybe no, that's yeah. true, okay. but it's kind of a radical thing to say because that, of course, again, was what 
the people who supported segregation said. Doctor, and is what it the a radical said, thing? Is, no, 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 no. Response was no. Is we need diversity. Is it, it got to be about it, people who are different. Is it a radical thing to say that you know somebody who is closeted gay and you know you know feels you know harm in their community because of that not in the Columbia community but maybe at home you know to come together with somebody else who's openly gay and share experiences and feel more comfortable is that not is that not a good thing for our community? Well I don't know I thought that it was good to be with people who are different from you I thought diversity was our strength but you're saying it's yeah, not. Yeah I think but that's important. Question, no 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 this no, is no, this is about no 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 this is about John. diversity look it's about it's about, it's about getting people it's about getting people together to share <laughs> experiences. Too much. So that's not diversity that's sameness is what you're seeking but let me ask you this really quick what if a straight person were to sneak into the all gay room? Like, could it's you not, do a gay what do you check? Mean, what like, do you how mean would you in? know? Well, if you're setting aside a room for all gay people, what if someone said, hey, I'm gay too, because, you know, he wanted to use the room. Is there like a gay test, or how do you ascertain gayness? As I said, anybody, can, anybody can, can, can come into these spaces to talk about issues. This is not a test. What, uh, that anybody is Well, welcome. you said that white groups are not allowed to use the black student lounges without the presence of black students. And I'm asking you, could straight students like try and pass? I mean, like, what? It, how are you defining gay exactly? I mean, if you could be what, precise. What, what, are you asking me what is gay? Well, oh, do I don't know. I mean, I'm asking you. You're the one who's setting up the rooms. It's not a question I've actually entertained before, but I've never seen a room reserved for people who are gay. So I'm asking you what the, what it means. It means it's a space that provides support for that community in which other people who are not from that community can come in and engage. But and how do you hear, know you're a member of the community? The gay what are the entrance requirements for membership in that community? I mean, again, I'm not being mean. I'm just, they're your room. So I'm asking, like, what are the rules here? So the way it'll work is that there'll be student groups from each of these communities that will be able to book those spaces. And when they provide programming, other students from other backgrounds will also be able to join. Okay. I think you may have some people sneaking in. That's just a guess. Sean, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Thanks so much. I appreciate the opportunity.